This morning, at the end of our watch along, one of you asked me if today's episode changed my mind at all about the show. Uh, Because I hadn't seen today's episode yet. And my feeling on that is, is that while I think this is an extremely well-written episode, and it's my second favorite of the five, episode one is still, that's the magic sauce. Uh, That set the bar so high for this show. And I I still don't, I mean, Jeremy Slater wrote that episode, and he's writing the final episode. So as I said in my review, maybe it'll end as strong as it started. But this was very good. But I still have the concern that I had when I reviewed the show. And, well, I think two things. I think it has too much to do, which makes it a little unfocused. Uh, Very little Moon Knight in a Moon Knight show. Uh, A lot of Mark Spector and Stephen Grant, though. And that also, they only have one episode left. And I just don't see how they can possibly tie this all up. Unless they're getting another season. Uh, And I have to say, I like like the show. I like elements of the show and the performances so much that I actually would like another season. Because there's no way they're going to wrap it up correctly. You know, I don't think they're going to be able to put a bow on it. Could you ever put a bow on Mark Spector with his mind fractured? Is it still fractured? We'll discuss. Uh, But I I mean, I don't think you could leave it as is. I mean, so I would like another season, although the ratings are, of course, going to be a big determinant on that, especially as streaming services start to dial back on spending. You're going to have to post good numbers to keep going. But this was really well written. This, This, you know, Jeremy Slater, I think, has done the best. But uh, I'll, I, I'll, I forgot to look up who wrote it when I was doing my notes for this, so I'll put the name up here, or the names. But this was very, this was good. There's a lot of cool stuff in here, especially you'll see once we go over it. All right, let's get started. So Harold might be doing his best Ned Flanders impression. Hilarious, that's a Disney character now, so they can make that reference. But speaking of Disney characters, Steven is doing a pretty darn good Anna. The sweeter, more innocent, and upbeat of the two. Sacrificing themselves for a sibling, torturing themselves with guilt. Oh my god, it's the same. They even both turn into ice. Sure, Steven turns into sand ice, but still, he was frozen too. And like Anna, he better come back. During the watch along, one of you pointed out that Mark created Steven as a crutch and that by getting rid of him, taking away his purpose uh, by letting Steven in on all the dark details that his persona was supposed to be an escape from, well, that's why the scales eventually balanced that, well, we'll talk about that even, this is just the intro. There's like, there's so much evidence as to that. So that's why I said it's well-written. But basically the idea is, is that at the end of the episode, Mark is healed. That's why the scale balances. It's a very clever uh, psychiatry metaphor and exploration. But I don't care. I want Steven back. (laughs) I was supposed to get a third personality this episode, and instead I lost the better of the two that we had. Now, on that note, I know some of you are probably glad to see Steven go, and you should be ashamed of yourself. He's wonderful. Kudos to Oscar Isaac for making Mark's different personality so distinct that I feel the loss of one of them so profoundly. I, I'm still kind of sad about it. I, it was just really heart-wrenching. Elizabeth Olsen, Paul Bettany, and Katherine Hahn all got multiple acting nominations for WandaVision, the only Disney plus Marvel show to get any recognition from the industry with awards like that. It, but it didn't win any Emmys, and it was completely shut out of the SAG Awards, by the way. Hopefully Oscar Isaac and maybe Ethan Hawke can build on that, especially Isaac. Isaac really deserves to be nominated. I don't know if he'll win, because it is still a superhero show, and Streaming shows are awfully competitive these days in terms of quality, but he should be up there as a nominee. He, his work here is phenomenal. He's his own special effect, and I love it. All right, so on that note, let's break down the big revelations of this episode, the most soul-crushing hour of television since we found out what really happened on WandaVision. I thought it was that good. Uh, so, I mean, I, I guess you can see, I've, I like elements of the show quite a bit. I want to be clear about that. I just feel like as a whole... So far, it just doesn't quite gel. And I have points to that in this breakdown as well. All right, so yes, Mark, it turns out, is dead. Oh, my God, shot twice by Harrow, it seems, who was just thorough. He just shot him twice, double tap. Uh, And we get a crash course in the Egyptian afterlife from Tawaret, 
whose presentation I feel really could have used visuals. It's hard to follow. When I went through it again with my notes here, I turned on closed captioning. If your show needs me to be able to read the script along with you, I, you, need, you need to fix that. All right, so anyway, turns out that this isn't the afterlife, but the realm of Duat, which is the Egyptian underworld, uh, which can be explored. And it has many, many layers, AKA planes. And they give a shout out to the ancestral plane, Black Panther reference, of course, which is a nice touch because Egypt is in Africa, as, in, as is Wakanda, so it makes sense that their mythology and their, their gods would kind of have an overlap and be the same. I liked that. I thought that was nice. Uh, a human traveler, though, in the Duat often makes a plane into something they can deal with, that they can perceive, like a mental hospital. Uh, and it was a great, because, you know, Stephen was like, why would we make it a mental hospital? And Mark's because, like, because we're crazy. I'll, I mean, Do Dr. Harrow was awfully convincing, to be fair. We'll talk about Ethan Hawke at the, I mean, this really wasn't Ethan Hawke's episode, but he was very good in his scenes. So we'll give him his due. But yes, I thought it was hilarious that Mark was like, this is clearly, we are crazy. Dr. Harrow was right all along. And then he was so relieved to discover that he really was dead and in the afterlife. That was great. And it, what really sold it was the best VFX shot we've had to date, movie level good. When you saw that ship, ship in the sand moving along, it was gorgeous. It, was, it could have passed the ship from Seoul. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. But it was really, really well done. I think it was just, for a moment, it was like everything this show would be if Moon Knight was a movie. All right, so they're sailing to the Field of Reeds, a.k.a. Egyptian Paradise. It seems like there's not a lot to do there, but whatever. I mean, I guess that's always the idea of heaven. But anyway, uh, but first their hearts must be weighed on the scales. Like Stephen told that student in episode one, and like the poster that just came out, not Ahmet's scales, we'll get to that. But uh, if their two hearts cannot balance against the feather, you get tossed overboard and frozen forever in the sand, says Towerette foreshadowing of what happened, of course, at the end of the episode. Although, you know, Stephen sacrificed himself. He jumped. Uh, it was beautiful. Stephen, I love you. But anyway, but here, uh, when the hearts can't balance, um, Mark and Stephen are forced to search the boat, a.k.a. their souls, that has all their memories on board, to try and balance the scales before they reach that moment of judgment. That's where they're sailing to. Uh, so there's an element of time. So... This reveals Mark Spector's origin story. Uh, and once again, this show chooses Mark's personal story to focus the bulk of attention on rather than a superhero story. It's crazy when you think about it. This is a show called Moon Knight about an Egyptian superhero uh, who is mostly a superhero, spends most of his time in that way in the comics. Yet on the show, I don't know if it's for budgetary reasons or if this is just what interested the showrunners, the showrunner the most. But it's like, he's never Moon Knight. Even in the watch along this morning, a lot of you were, some of you were complaining that like, Moon Knight's never on his own show. But so it's, it's fascinating that they decided to do that. They sw switched the A and B storylines. They made the B the A storyline. And we'll see if that was the right choice when we see what the ratings are like for the show and if it does get any good awards, or at least nominations. That will be the deciding factor as to whether or not this was a good plan. And I'm curious what your vote is right now down below. Although I think you can't really decide till you see the final episode next week. All right, so his personal origin. Turns out Mark had a real flesh and blood brother who acts, because you know, Steven's kind of like his brother too. Uh, metaphor city, baby. Who acts, and then, so his real brother accidentally uh, drowned when they were out playing one day. In fact, they were playing Tomb Buster, a movie they both enjoyed. Not only did Mark blame himself for his brother's death, but cruelly, his mother did too. Now, this is where it gets good. Speaking of looking in a mirror, we know, of course, reflective surfaces are big on this show, right? Mark is pretty much the mirror image of his mother, both warped by guilt and hate for themselves and for each other. I think Mark's mother knows deep down that it's her fault, but she doesn't. She just can't accept it, so she's pushing it on Mark. Mark's mother drank, just as we see Mark do later on when he becomes an adult, was prone to violence. Again, a quality that Mark came to have when he grew up. And what does Mark say about his mother when she's at the door trying to come into his room? He keeps saying over and over to himself, it's not my mom, as if she becomes another person. Just as he does, we see him turn into Stephen Grant even as a child. We see him do that personality switch to another persona. Stephen is not only like Dr. Stephen Grant in name, but 
he, you know, Steve, uh, Mark chose that name because it says on the poster, when danger is near, Stephen Grant has no fear. Although I would argue that Mark Stephen just seems to be more oblivious to fear and to danger. But I would also say that Stephen is a lot like Mark's father, who doesn't take action. A very kind person, but an, someone who is inactive. I was teenage Mark, by the way. Why the heck didn't his dad get a divorce, right? And take Mark away from there. Or at least take him out of the house for his birthday. How many times is he going to have the same sad birthday celebration at home? Go out to a restaurant, Mark's dad. All right, so Stephen Grant is the version of Mark Spector that had a great life. That's very touching. That he's, you know, He says, you're not meant to see that. That's the whole point of view. Furthermore, we discover that things really started to become a problem when Mark's mother died. That's when their personality started to bleed over into each other because it broke Mark even further. The power of a mother, even though she was so cruel to him. Maybe they, he felt that bond because they were so similar to it. Maybe it helped him understand her. If we had more episodes, we could explore this. But anyway, uh, to Stephen... She, of course, was still alive. He was just, he just felt he was leaving messages for her. I told you those calls to his mother were important, but here's a problem with this show. Those calls seem like a lifetime ago, don't they, right? Mark hasn't called his mother for two whole episodes now. Why wouldn't he call her from Egypt? I mean, exciting stuff is happening. Fill, your, fill her in. So there's a disconnect. It almost feels like that is a different show. It's how we're so far from that point. But even though I think that's a flaw, I think that this stuff is so powerful, it gets past that. And so again, as some of you are arguing, there is no longer a point to Steven after this episode. He knows all the bad stuff. He knows he's not the original personality, so the illusion is broken. Uh, when he switches over, he's gonna know that he's just, a, he's just a, 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 some, a way for Mark to deal with problems. He even takes on Mark's violent tendencies to save him on the boat, and he forgives Mark. Really, Mark forgiving himself. I'm sure that's key to what happens. So then it's time for him to go overboard so that Mark, healed, can go on. It's beautiful, but I don't care. I want Stephen back. <laughs> As Dr. Harrow says, reality is all about perception. And Stephen had his own thoughts and hopes and dreams. He, he's very real indeed. And that right there is an interesting commentary and exploration of DID, dissociative identity disorder, that the pers personas, a lot of you have been telling me, oh, it's the same person, but I don't know. I don't think so. I'd be curious. I know some of you who've been watching these breakdowns either have DID or know someone with that, um, with that situation. And I'd be curious how you view it. I view them as so separate that I really wouldn't treat them as, it's like almost like Christopher Nolan's inception and, and the idea of perception. You know, it's all, you know, it's all your mind. You know, what, what is real is based on what you perceive and what you see. So whoever's driving, I think is a different person. And that's fascinating to me. Uh, and on that note, what, as one of you pointed out, another way to look at it is that Mark's now gotten two brothers accidentally killed, which was cold. But, you know, I think arguable. Back to Mark, the episode ends with him now having to stop Harrow and Ahmet, who it seems are now wreaking havoc on the underworld because they're judging souls too early on a grand scale. They've been doing that for a while now, but now it's raining souls. And uh, Towerett says these souls are being judged before their time. So I guess they should have had time to balance out their scales. I wonder what you would have to do to balance out what you did, like that older woman that was killed. I'm like, maybe she was gonna do some really great stuff. But I mean, but Harrow argued that he saw your future too, so he knew if you were gonna make up for it. So let's, uh, I'd like to hear that explained. All right, but anyway, uh, the way they figure they can bring him back, because Towerette points out that even if she brings Mark back to the world of the living, the land of the living, he's still going to have a body with two gun sh gunshot hole, uh, gun, uh, you know, bullet holes in it. So uh, just as I, you know, one of the ways I said, uh, you know, Mark says, or Stephen and Mark say, tell Layla, get word to her to free Conchu so he can heal us as he did before. So that leads us to the superhero origin story that got so little time compared to the personal origin story. So we see the moment right after Layla's father was killed, which happened outside. For some reason, I imagined it happened in a tomb, but I felt very bad for him. The scarf didn't look anything like I thought it would. Wasn't it supposed to have like artwork on it? All right, but anyway, and also I think I would have liked to have seen that moment, quite frankly, but we came in, you know, it's always, when should you, you know, end a scene uh, start a scene as late as possible and end it as early as possible. But as I said, I kind of would have liked to have seen what happened there because it's kind of important to Layla. 
like get back and she's like did you see my father and his death again did you get to see him again and like that wasn't important to me Layla all right anyway we learned that Mark was discharged from the army after going AWOL presumably as his time as Stephen because Stephen didn't know he was you know he had enlisted in the military so Mark who said he had very few options I'm like I don't think so you always I mean come on that, you know that's an excuse Mark but anyway he hooked up with his old commanding officer his old CO military lingo for commanding officer Bushman to raid an Egyptian tomb. That was the gig. That's all straight out of the comics. Even Bushman, who in the comics was eventually brought back as a Moon Knight villain and fellow mental patient, interestingly enough. Uh, anyway, so if we get a season two, let's, let's have some Bushman in it. All right, so Mark is so devastated by how his life has turned out that he's managed to lead to innocents being killed yet again. He's like, how many accidents can I have? He's bleeding out. So he's about to take his own life. And I'm surprised there is no suicide warning at the beginning of this episode. I guess they're like, there's parental controls, use them. But anyway, I, th I think they should have put a warning on it. But anyway, uh, Khonshu presents his deal. And Stephen argues that Khonshu manipulated Mark while Mark counters, you know, because he's depressed as always, that he's always been a killer. So he was just being you know, a chance to continue being his true self. I think it was a pretty straightforward deal. Khonshu's like, you're about to die. I can save you, but I ain't doing it for free. And so, and you have a set of skills that I could use. And I mean, he did only seem to be killing horrible people. Uh, that's the way they made it seem when they saw that room of all the people he'd ever killed, which I thought was a powerful visual. And I, that his brother was in there was, I thought that stuff was very well done. But I don't think Khonshu manipulated him. I mean, I, I mean, he might have, but I haven't seen any evidence of it. All right, three last things I want to touch on. One, I'm glad that Mark's Jewish heritage was finally made very clear in this episode. It's an important part of the character from the comics, and I know it's important to a number of Moon Knight fans, so it was really great to see that. Also, remember he's from Chicago in the comics. His passport in episode two said he was from Illinois. And then they said the mental hospital here, Putnam, also from the comics, is supposed to be in Chicago as well. And Harrow says it was Stephen who checked them in their body into the mental institution. On that note, as I said, kudos to Ethan Hawke, who is so convincing in his scenes here as Dr. Harrow, he had me believing Mark was maybe imagining all this. And I even know I'm watching a Marvel show, and I was like, maybe he's not a superhero. <laughs> so good. And in that opening scene, I could swear that Mark suddenly had a New York accent. You heard it too, didn't you, right? Which would fit that cabbie persona and leads to three, Jake Lockley. Fittingly, the third personality. Now, in the comments on my watch long video, one of you was like, why does Mark on the show need to have a third personality? Just because it was in the comics? Well, no. The show has already, already heavily alluded to a third personality with imagery, with the scene that either Mark and Steven were neither, neither of them were in control and were like, who was just driving and killed all these dudes? The second sarcophagus that was very angry in the last episode, you know, and Steven coming out of a sarcophagus right before that. Uh, and now this new accent with a much more violent persona, the most violent we've seen yet, had the most bashed up face. That was some great makeup, by the way. It looked like it hurt, didn't it? That was impressive. And that fits, that violence fits with the, the missing pers persona that killed all those people in episode three. So not to have a third personality would be sloppy writing and leave a ton of loose ends. This show only has so much time. Not enough, quite frankly. Again, only one episode left. Why waste valuable minutes with clues for a third personality that ends up not being there? So we better show up next week. Because as I said, it's going to be really sloppy writing if he doesn't. All right, so that's episode five. Did you like the answers that you got, right? How do you feel about so little Moon Knight the superhero on this show and more about Mark and Steven? Uh, do you believe they can wrap this all up with just one more episode? Uh, and do you want Steven back? And do you want Jake Lockley at all? One more week to go. I am excited. I will say that. I am excited. I mean, I have problems with the show, but I like Mark. I like Oscar Isaac and... Uh, uh, Ethan Hawke and Layla so much, you know, Maya Kalamau uh, Kalamaui, I would like their stories to continue. Maybe just maybe a little better done and a little more space to do it. All right. So what did you, th what did you think? Share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.